Unit 14, Section 2. Uh, we're going to start this section by uh, taking a look at the uh, diatoms. The diatoms are in the division Bacillariophyta. And diatoms are mainly uh, unicellular organisms. Uh, the key thing about diatoms, though, is their cell wall is silicon based. It's called a frustule. Um, the cell wall, as we saw, um, of the blue green algae, um, had a mucus surrounding the capsule, which had a cell wall um, consisting of three layers. The diatom structure is, is very, very different than that. And it's this silicon based or solid cell wall, again called a frustule, and this wall fits to fits together. There's two halves of it, and they fit together like a box, like a lid on a box. And being silicon, they're often really intricately marked, like cut crystal. Diatoms can live in uh, virtually any uh, aquatic habitat. Um, this slide shows marine diatoms, which means uh, these are from salt water. This next slide shows some freshwater diatoms. If you look at these uh, photographs, photomicrographs, um, you can see uh, large differences in shapes. Uh, from the uh, long rod-like to these more rounded ends, this fan shape, a number of different shapes and sizes. This next slide shows a uh, diatom imaged with an electron microscope, which gives us a much better, closer look at the intricate structure of this uh, silicon-based cell wall. Uh, pretty amazing looking thing uh, on, when you can view it on this scale. Now, you can almost see in this slide um, where the two halves of the frustule fit together. Now, diatoms can reproduce asexually or sexually. Now, keep in mind, this is a silicon-based cell wall. Once it's made, it can't grow. It's stuck at this size, okay? And one half sort of fits over the other half a little bit. So, when diatoms reproduce asexually, they reproduce by binary fission. Now, binary fission is when a cell splits into two, and you end up with two new cells. The same thing happens with diatoms. Each daughter cell receives one half of the frustule from the parent, and then they construct a new smaller frustule that fits into the half that they received. As you can imagine, since the frustules can't grow, um, the size, the average size of the cell of the diatoms is reduced each time they go through this um, binary fission. They have a solution to that problem. Once the diatom cell has been reduced in size by about one third, um, they form a fertile cell. That um, fertile cell reproduces sexually, which creates a new vegetative cell back at the original size, restoring the average cell size. Now, some species can reproduce asexually without a reduction in cell size, 
Um, in those species, sexual reproduction may not be required. Other species don't have that ability and they need this sexual reproduction stage uh, in order to maintain the average cell size. Uh, this slide shows a diatom life cycle. Um, let's start here at the initial cell, okay? And you can see that gives us this normal vegetative cell up here. And we have two halves of a frustule, um, the smaller bottom half fitting into this larger upper half. Now, it undergoes vegetative cell division, so this bottom half separates from this upper half. Each half then makes a new piece that fits inside. The one that gets the upper half remains the same size as the original cell. However, the one that gets the bottom half has to create a new smaller frustule to fit inside. When that happens again, we have a new bottom half here. We have the original upper half. We have the bottom half of this cell and the upper half of that cell. And each one of those now makes a new smaller piece that fits inside. And you can see these cells getting smaller and smaller. Now, once they've been reduced by about a third, they form a fertile cell, which divides by meiosis, forming a haploid cell, meaning a cell that has only half of the DNA of the adult organism. These haploid cells fuse and result in something called an oxospore in which develops this new full-sized diatom cell. Kind of a complicated life cycle, but in order to maintain the average size, they have to go through this process. So what do we use diatoms for, if anything? Well, we actually end up using them a lot. Diatomaceous earth is a type of sedimentary rock that's made mostly from the shells, those silicon shells of diatom. Um, it has a lot of uses for humans, filters for aquariums, wine, and other liquids, um, a mechanical insecticide. Think about this, um, a, an insecticide that's poisonous, uh, kills insects by getting inside their body or in, in one way or another and poisoning them, killing them that way. A mechanical insecticide, diatomaceous earth, um, these sharp edges of the crushed um, silicon shells or frustules uh, get picked up on the insects, ants or roaches or whatever, and it can cut their exoskeletons, causing them to die. Um, some animals get it on their legs or get it on their antennas and uh, clean it off. They don't like having these, this stuff on them and they swallow it and it, and it cuts them on the inside. Um, so it makes a, a somewhat of effective insecticide that um, isn't poisonous or really dangerous in any way to uh, humans or pets. Um, <clears throat> finally, they're used in abrasives um, and things like toothpaste, but also in things like polishing compounds for paints and stuff like that. Um, this photograph shows uh, mining of diatomaceous earth and really this whole 
area here of whitish colored soil um, is the diatomaceous earth. Uh, this slide shows a filter. And since diatomaceous earth is composed of silicon and, and it's uh, um, non-toxic, uh, it makes a great filter. In this case, it's used for uh, clarifying wine, um, removes micros almost microscopic amounts of uh, uh, grape pulp and, and uh, bits of yeast and that sort of thing. Um, but it's also used uh, commonly uh, in aquarium filters, particularly um, saltwater aquariums. Okay, the next group of algae that we'll look at are called the euglenoids. And it's a small group of mostly freshwater, photosynthetic, single-celled flagellate organisms. Okay, this means that, um, and we'll see, um, in a later slide, uh, that they have a single single cell, don't typically form colonies, and they'll have flagella or a tail with which they can swim. Um, they all actually have two flagella, but occasionally the uh, second flagella doesn't extend from the body. Um, in some species, they can actually swim with the flagella, um, flagellum. They also have an eye spot uh, that allows them to react to light. They can't see as such. They can detect light and dark falling on, uh, on the uh, eye spot. Um, they can feed as heterotrophs meaning that they can feed on other organisms. Um, they, can, they can eat smaller organisms like blue-green algae. Um, but if there's sufficient light available, they can also be autotrophs, meaning they can manufacture their food from sunlight, water, carbon dioxide. Um, they reproduce asexually by binary fission, the cells simply split into two cells and each cell grows into a, a new adult, um, single cell adult. Here's a drawing uh, showing uh, euglena. And here you can see the uh, eye spot. It again, detects light and dark. Um, you can see uh, the uh, flagella here, this one extending from the body. But you can see inside a uh, second flagella that is not quite uh, extending from the body. Um, looking inside, you can see things that we might uh, um, recognize as similar to uh, plant cell structure that we saw in the unit on uh, structure and physiology. Here we have a uh, central vacuole um, this is a contractile vacuole that uh, functions like the vacuole in a plant cell um, a nucleus that contains the DNA. These are eukaryotic organisms. Over here, um, we can see uh, here and here, polysaccharides, meaning uh, sugars, that have been stored by photosynthesis. So the euglena have uh, quite a versatile lifestyle. They can, as we said, be autotrophs and use photosynthesis or heterotrophs and consume other smaller organisms. Um, next section, we'll take a look at uh, uh, the larger algaes, the red, green, and brown algaes.